With so much news going around about blockbuster trades in the NBA, not enough has been focused on how the Celtics are on the way to win an NBA championship this season and how this roster could be one of the best rosters we've seen in the past 10 years. With the revamp of coaching staff and with a revamp of players, I get into how I think the Boston Celtics are a main team to win the NBA championship this offseason with teams that I think can contend with them in the Eastern Conference. But before we get into that Boston Celtics news, I would like to say that 92% of our viewers are not subscribed. And we'd greatly appreciate it if you guys hit that subscribe button and join the Celtics Digest family here guys we post celtics content almost daily here and we're well on our way to get to our goal of a thousand subscribers we just hit 450 subscribers yesterday i can't thank you guys enough for smashing that subscribe button for all you guys that enjoy our content but those who do enjoy our content and haven't hit that button yet make sure to hit that button so you can get all your celtics content as fast as you want and right away for the regular season but now let's get into the topics at hand today which is talking about the Celtics being championship caliber. And yes, I know the Celtics are championship caliber. They made the NBA Finals two seasons ago. They were one game short of making the Finals last year. And if they win one of those first three games versus the Miami Heat, I for sure think that they have a chance to make the NBA Finals and win the NBA Finals versus the Denver Nuggets. But now, obviously, we got a new revamp of coaches, new revamp of the roster, and the team is looking pretty solid. We bring in a guy like Kristaps Porzingis from Trading Marcus Smart, and I think that he's going to, with his non-injuries, I think he's going to be a main X factor for this Boston Celtics team and being the third star. So let's look at the Boston Celtics roster. Now, we obviously just mentioned Kristaps Porzingis. I think the flexibility of him being able to play the four and the five, being able to be a rim protector and a great three-point shooter adds a lot of, lot of diversity to the Celtics in there front court back there i also think that jason tatum trying to be an mvp candidate is going to happen this season and i think he's going to try to prove to the nba that he is one of the top dogs so don't be expecting anything shy of that from him jalen brown again another guy who's trying to prove that he's one of the top 15 20 players in the nba i think he'll be looking for a great season also Guys like Robert Williams and Al Horford, who have been with the team for a decent amount of time. Rob Williams, a great rim-protecting center, working on his jump shot, hopefully to expand that for his game. And Al Horford, a guy who's getting a little bit older, but hopefully can buy into that bench role. I would love that as a veteran locker room piece. The only really question marks that I have is Malcolm Brogdon, obviously. And I think that the whole Malcolm Brogdon situation has been wonky this offseason. But if he's ready to go for training camp and he's ready to buy in, I think him coming back as the sixth man of the year being our star-studded guard off the bench is another valuable piece that the Boston Celtics have that a lot of these teams do not. And then when we talk about guys like Jordan Walsh, Sam Hauser, I think guys like that can actually develop and work for their spots on this bench and actually be key components. I think that Jared Walsh could possibly be a Grant Williams replacement. And as we've seen from Sam Hauser, a lot of teams have disrespected him from three-pointers in the past. So if he were to get some looks throughout the regular season and get a lot of three-point opportunities have some good games. He might have some 12 to 15 point games that carry the Celtics on a nice dub. But let's talk about the other team in the Eastern Conference that I think could rival the Boston Celtics as the two top teams, the 1A and 1B team in the Eastern Conference. And that is the Milwaukee Bucks who just recently acquired top 10 player in the league that I think, Damian Lillard. So let's look at the Milwaukee Bucks roster. Obviously, they have Giannis Antetokounmpo, a top five player in the NBA, and recently acquired Damian Lillard. So two top 10 players in the NBA. And depending on you, on who you ask, you could say that the Celtics and the Bucks are going to be starting a new rivalry here soon. The Battle of the Greens, baby. Who's the best green team in the Eastern Conference with two top 20 players in the NBA in Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum versus Damian Lillard and Giannis Antetokounmpo. Obviously, the Bucks have Chris Middleton, a guy who's been getting older in the years, but is still a valuable piece. And even though we've seen him have some injury history in the past, hopefully he can be a 20-point-per-game scorer for the Milwaukee Bucks, like Kristaps Porzingis is for the Celtics. you got a guy in Brooke Lopez who has bought in his role as a great starting center and has been one of the best defensive players in the league in the past couple years as he was a top three candidate in Defensive Player of the Year last year. And Bobby Portis, another guy who buys into his roll off the bench another great six-man candidate who again the Bucks have that great roster flexibility of having Giannis, Middleton, Portis, and Lopez you have so many different looks that you can run with starting lineups depending on injuries I think it's a key for the Bucks. so I realistically think that the Bucks and the Celtics are the two top teams the only thing that I think puts the Celtics a little bit ahead of the Milwaukee Bucks is that the Bucks do not have a backup point guard at the moment they lost Javon Carter to the Chicago Bulls in free agency and they did sign Ty Ty Washington to a two-way deal, but Ty Ty Washington being kind of 
thrown in the gutter in Houston with all their young guards and Kevin Porter Jr., Jalen Green, Josh Christopher. Never really got to show us what his potential was. And hopefully with the Milwaukee Bucks, he could and potentially be their backup starting point guard. But at the moment, I see him just being a Wisconsin herd G League guy at the moment. And I think the Bucks will look into free agency to pick up a backup point guard. And the main guy that I think they will be looking at, and I mentioned him here on the Celtics Digest channel before, is Cameron Payne. I think Cameron Payne would be a great fit for the Milwaukee Bucks as a veteran point guard who actually knows how to play in the playoffs, is a great playmaker, a great defender, as a decent shooter as well. And I think he could buy into this role for the Milwaukee Bucks of being a backup point guard and being a nice cheap replacement for Javon Carter. So obviously, I think the Boston Celtics and the Milwaukee Bucks are the two top teams in the Eastern Conference. But let's look at the Eastern Conference and look at four other teams that I think could possibly work their way into rivaling with the Celtics and the Bucks. So we're going to be looking at the Eastern Conference standings from last year. Now, as you guys can see, the Bucks and the Celtics were already the two of the top teams in the Eastern Conference, and I think they will finish around the same spot this season as well. But teams that I would like to talk about in this video are the Sixers, the Heat, the Knicks, and the Cavaliers. So the Philadelphia 76ers obviously have their whole James Harden dilemma and their whole James Harden beef. Are they going to move off of James Harden? And if so, what are they going to get in return? As we've seen with this Damian Miller trade, Drew Holiday's name has been present, obviously, with the Boston Celtics and multiple other teams like the Clippers, the Lakers, the Sixers, and the Heat. So I could see definitely the, Six the Sixers going after Drew Holiday, bringing him back, and doing a three-team deal with the Blazers and the Clippers, sending Harden to the Clippers. And I think that would possibly move the Sixers as the third team in the Eastern Conference and have them competing with the Celtics and the Bucks. I also think a team like the Miami Heat, who lost out on the Damian Lillard sweepstakes as he was their favorite team to land him, I think they desperately need to actively go get a point guard as they lost two key starters and two guards for their playoff team last year and Max Struess and Gabe Vincent. They desperately need a replacement there and I think Drew Holiday is still a solid level replacement. Even though he's not no Dame Lillard, he still will buy in, be a great defensive player, be a great on and off ball player alongside Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo and I think that he would fit perfectly. So if Drew Holiday were to land with the Sixers or to land with the Miami Heat, I personally think that either of those teams could shoot up to be the third team to rival the Celtics and the Bucks. But if neither team were to receive Drew Holiday and still have their holes at point guard, I think there are two teams that could potentially pass the Heat and the 76ers to be the third best team, and that is the Cleveland Cavaliers and the New York Knicks. So let's look back at the Eastern Conference standings. As you guys can see, the Cleveland Cavaliers finished fourth and the New York Knicks finished five. The Cleveland Cavaliers have a lot of young guys. They just acquired, obviously, superstar Donovan Mitchell last year, and he was supposed to be their main focal point for this offense, and he proved that he could be a number one guy on a team. Playing alongside young guys like Darius Garland, Jared Allen, Evan Mobley, it was tough for this Cleveland Cavaliers team to succeed in the playoffs as they had a lot of inexperience in the playoffs and had a lack of bench depth. But I think going into, obviously, this offseason, signing guys like Matt Struess and Georges Niang to help bring some shooting to your bench is definitely going to help out this Cleveland Cavaliers team and definitely make them a force to be reckoned with. Guys like Darius Garland, Evan Mobley, Jared Allen, Donovan Mitchell, they're only getting better as well, and they're only going to keep developing too. So young teams like this definitely can get scarier over the offseason, and a team like the Cavaliers, I would not mark an X next to them. I think they would be a definitely contender in this Eastern Conference. And the team that beat them in the playoffs is the New York Knicks, and I also think that they're a playoff team and contending team to take the top three seed. Obviously, they just got all-star Jalen Brunson, big guy to kind of revitalize their franchise, kind of help Julius Randle kind of move the needle in New York. You got a guy like RJ, who we've seen some bright flashes from, but their big signing in Dante DiVincenzo, I really, really like. I think this provides the Knicks with some great flexibility at the guard position. You obviously lose Derrick Rose, and you're probably not going to be playing Evan Fournier that much, and hopefully Dante DiVincenzo can be what you wanted from Evan Fournier signing two years ago, and can be that six-man guy or great shooter alongside Brunson and Hart. You can play him with quickly off the bench. You can run them alongside RJ in the starting lineup. There's so much flexibility that this Knicks team has at the guard position. And I think by having that, it's going to help them with this playoff. And I think if they were to move off of Evan Fournier with their multiple, multiple amount of first round picks in the future, I think they could get another star piece to actually make them a contender in the Eastern Conference as well. So ultimately, I think the Celtics and the Bucks are the 1A and 1B of the Eastern Conference with the Miami Heat and the Philadelphia 76ers being a tier underneath, with the Cavs and the Knicks being a tier underneath those teams, with the possibility of passing the Knicks, with the possibility of passing either the 
Heat or the Sixers to being the third best team in the Eastern Conference. So let me know what you guys think in, Eastern, in the comment section below. Do you guys think the Celtics are a championship contending team? And where do you guys think they fall atop the Eastern Conference in these standings by the end of the season? I want to know what your guys' opinions are. I greatly appreciate whenever you guys comment. I love reading them. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I'm Bruce Velez. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode of Celtics Digest, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.